Lightning 135 minutes here into the one o'clock hour with local natives. Just had them in studio uh, last week when they were in town for Ryman Auditorium. And right now we have Tegan and Sarah in the Lightning 100 studio. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Happy to, happy to have you here uh, on the show today. It's tonight. You're headlining the Cannery Ballroom. They said we get away some tickets Ooh. doors are at seven show starts at eight mercylounge.com tegan and sarah.com if you want to get those in advance and uh, we're actually talking here uh the opener torres yeah. is local she's based out of nashville these days this so. is true and and sh gonna shred on the guitar oh my she's god gonna shred. She, she she just like shreds every night she's amazing yeah. she's got great vocalists great songs we love her Fun. Awesome. Well, I'm so happy to, to have you here. Uh, I think it's the first time I've had you on my show. I did get to meet you backstage at Bonnaroo one summer when, when you came quite, in. Quite a few years That's ago now. Almost 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Has it been that long? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, that was the last time we played Bonnaroo, and w that, that was the same trip where we then came back that night and performed with Tiesto, yeah. if I recall. Oh, yeah, wow. that was like 2008, 2009, somewhere in there. Yeah. Time, you time, haven't aged at all. Time flies. No, I, I have a little <laughs> bit. I'm getting, no, some, getting some gray hair. A little gray, but no wrinkles at all. Just no wrinkles. <laughs> Wrinkles. Good. <laughs> Take it, it's Sarah. That's good because I just I just had another birthday, so you know, oh, no. starting like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I, that's one of the things I, I realized that I mean, this is your eighth album yeah. that yeah. you've you've put out. So you must have been really young when you started this thing. That's we, we always point that out. Like we made it. We made probably two, if not three, records before most bands usually just put out their first record. You know, we started right out of high school, so we were able to put together a budget and a team and, and, and make a record when we were 18 years old. So so we were really on it. And um, But it's it's been great. I mean, it's been a nice ride. I'm glad we had time to develop and get to the place we are now. When I say eight records, it feels like I'm saying 800 records because it does <laughs> feel like a lot. But, um, you know. A few EPs in there, too. A few, I mean, they're all full-length <laughs> records. We really, like... Uh, I mean, on top of the oh, oh God, I know live records <laughs> yeah. and DVDs. I mean, we, you definitely can't. Um, We're part of the merchandising era. I mean, that's just like there's no you can't like feel ashamed of it. You know, it, the people there's a lot of emphasis on on that, and I think especially now that the music industry is like a Titanic, just like on its like it's like just the tip of the iceberg. You know, we can see it, and I don't know how much longer we'll be selling things like records and DVDs and all of this kind yeah. of stuff. So I think for us, we've really enjoyed that era of creating things for people, but. Well, we that don't was know also, we had a holds. really amazing fan base that wanted those things and was so cool. Like, still to this day, it's like there's a desire from our core fan base to collect everything and to, they still want it. They still physically want it. So I think Sarah and I are, uh, you know, we're still in love with that part of our industry. The idea of a collection of songs, like, still, still resonates with us, but we also... Uh, we recognize that maybe the changing. maybe the end of times for that. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. one of my favorite things is actually the f the physical copy because yeah. you get to open it up and you wonder is is there anything in here? What am I going to find? Yeah. You know, there's like how about just lyrics? This, like, you have I'm, the lyrics, I'm, which I've <laughs> always my entire life always known the wrong lyrics to songs. <laughs> uh, as I, I find out and I'm singing along and someone says, "Wait, what did you say?" <laughs> no. No, we still really appreciate. it. We think of it as an art form. I mean, we still think of ourselves first and foremost as writers, right? So we're we're we've been developing our craft for 20 years that's what we think you know so and and kind of fun you know uh here uh, on your most recent album love you to death which came out this summer uh one side you do have the lyrics and the other side you have this uh beautiful photograph yep. and it's it's it, i look at it you know you're identical twins and then you're sitting here looking into a mirror so yeah it's kind <laughs> of tripping thank you for appreciating <laughs> <that>. totally <laughs> uh, uh all right well cool well uh hey let's let's have you play a song sure. all right we're gonna play a song from that new record love you to death it's called stop desire i'm gonna just put it out there out here on the radio and on facebook live which we're doing that have not properly rehearsed so i, I imagine i'll probably screw up just stick with me here Can't deny I'm begging for attention Dropping in, swooping for some tension Getting tired of making all this racket Waiting on you to get your ass in gear I didn't want to be so invested I played it cool and then I overdressed it You were there, I was tired of this Nonsense where you pretend you don't Get me Feel me, want me, like me, love me, need me tonight. If you're for my fire, you 
You can't stop this I Oh, 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 oh Stop this I Oh, oh, oh I try But your future might fire You can't stop this I Oh, 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 oh Stop this I Oh, 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 oh in a minute I'll be hoping that you're outside Another second you'll be walking on my wild side You know I'm ready for anything to happen Take this passion, turn it into action Get me, feel me, want me Like me, love me, need me Tonight Oh, 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 stop this I Oh, 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 I try Put your future my fire You can't stop this I Oh, 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 stop this I Oh, 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 right where I want you Back against the wall Trust when I promise never let you fall You're right where I want you Back against the wall You can Trust me, I'll never let you fall Tonight If you fall my fire You can't stop this I Oh, 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 stop this I Oh, 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 I've tried But your future my fire You can't stop this I Oh, 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 stop this I Oh, 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 oh. Lightning 100 live in the 1 RPM studio. That is Tegan and Sarah. Tonight they are going to headline a Cannery Ballroom on tour with Torres, who is based out of Nashville, Tennessee. Doors are at 7. Show starts at 8. MercyLounge.com or TeganAndSarah.com for tickets. And we are going to give away a pair of them for uh, you to have a chance to see this grammy nominated canadian duo featuring the twin sisters tegan and sarah uh you worked again with a uh, greg kirsten uh producer and uh it was i realized this it's been 15 15 years he put out a really cool record do you know what i'm going to say <laughs> is it the i don't know which one bird and the bee or the uh, gay guitar is that okay so so action figure party oh, okay. ah. i don't know if it, it was something that's like totally under under the radar but mm -hmm. it's it's one that uh, i've kept in my collection all these years yeah yeah gay guitar yeah gay guitar as well i mean you know greg was one of those producers that often we've we've sort of kind of found our own path and have really taken very little instruction from record labels <laughs> in terms of who to work with and what to do but with heartthrob our last record we did actually sort of open up the you know the channels and said like to a lot of people in our world who who would you like us to try to work with in you know make a pop record and uh, greg kirsten was on a bunch of people's lists and based on you know the fact that he had been in bands he's toured with bands he's been a musical director he's produced bands um we felt he was a good bridge for us because we we really did see ourselves coming from the indie rock world and we're nervous about jumping straight into the pop world and not getting along with you know that that production style or that process and because he'd sort of been from the world that we were uh you know firmly planted in he seemed like a good uh, a good tour guide and we love him so we've made now two records with him and i mean we just absolutely adore him i think he's a genius Wow. Yeah. I think he really is a genius. I mean, he's so, he would say, he would be embarrassed and say that that's not true, but there's certainly something prodigious about his talent and the way that he can sort of jump from instruments. And he, for us, has sort of, he's, he sort of ushered us into what I think is sort of a futuristic version of recording that really appeals to us. I know it doesn't appeal to the analog kind of old school folks, but for us, Tegan and I have really, um, even since we were like teenagers, always use recording as a way to hear ourselves and edit ourselves. And the process of recording in that way, you know, almost purely digital, digital is, is super attractive. So, um, yeah, he's just a great creative collaborator. We love him. Did, both times did you work in, does he have a studio that you went and worked in? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both, I mean, in, in both cases, there was a couple different, I mean, with Heartthrob, we worked in a couple different studios. This one, we just worked in his studio. He's He was sort of building it when we were making Heartthrob, so it was nice to return there. We were very comfortable, and 
he works a very manageable amount of time a day. Like he's very like respectful of his family and his health and his mind, and he doesn't overwork. There's none of these like sixteen hour epic recording sessions. There's no let's mic these drums for the next two days and get sounds. <laughs> which, you know, I mean, it's not to be cynical. Sarah and I, like I was saying earlier, we love our craft and and love being a part of this industry, and we're I think as positive and as excited as we were the day we started. But there was definitely a point where we realized most people are listening to music now on like iPhone, you know, speakers or little headphones or out of their computers. And like there was sort of like a, maybe we, we as our band, because it's more about the songs and our singing and the melodies and lyrics and whatever, that we didn't need to spend two days getting uh, drum sounds. And and in the end, I think we end up finding sounds we really like. I mean, like Sarah was saying, we use our demoing process as a way to sort of reflect back to us what we're doing. And I think we're able to sort of hone in on what we want before we even get into the studio. So we don't need to use as much time in the studio pulling our hair out which has been really refreshing. And Greg has definitely uh, ushered us into that era. <laughs> How has it been uh, taking this record on the road and, and doing it live? It's been actually pretty easy. We had a really amazing musical director that came in and helped us sort of figure out what needed to be reproduced live and what didn't. I think And also how to like how do you how do you fit seven other albums that don't yeah. sound like this album into a live show? I think we've got to the point now where we're where, where it, what is required is kind of an outside source to go like, okay, here's the songs you want to play. Here's how I propose that you perform them in a way that doesn't feel like you're going to give your audience audio whiplash. Like, h- how do we make this thing cohesive? Well, how do you make it feel fresh, right? Like, some yeah. of the songs, there's a couple songs we're playing in the set that we wrote and recorded in 2003 and 2004. And so how do we update those songs but still treasure and, you know, honor the original recording. So, um, yes, like Sarah said, an outside source can really help do that. So it's been really fun. But, like, Love You to Death itself was actually a really easy record to get um, ready for the live show because I I think it was a little less dense than our previous work. And so a lot of the key ingredients to make the songs live in a live space came really easily. And Sarah and I were more diligent. We were, like, actually, like, rehearsed and practiced and have been building core muscles Finally. to sing well. And, like, you finally know. decided rehearsing <laughs> made a great, it was a great idea. As, as a fan of music, it's really fun when you hear it done a little bit differently, maybe with a different arrangement. Sure. Yeah. I, I remember one time Feist came into that same backstage studio and had different arrangements on her songs. And yeah. I just loved it. As long as it's recognizable. My my thing is when I go to see a band play and they play like all the songs and I leave thinking like, what did I even just hear? <laughs> you know, I actually, the, it's, it's sort of a, like a big uh, name drop, but it's like, I love Madonna and the way that Madonna is able to reimagine those classic songs live. I mean, she's been playing that stuff for over 20 years and it still sounds super fresh. And it also feels like she's not... Um, it, d- it doesn't feel cheesy. Like, she's like, oh, you know what's popular? Electronic music. I'm going to just do that. <laughs> like, it feels like she's always taking the most innovative sounds or whatever's current and blending that with those songs that are so still relevant to me. I loved your Madonna voice. That was really yeah, cool. Yeah, that's how she probably talks, I think. <laughs> I'm Tegan and Sarah here in the 1RPM studio. Tonight, they're headlining a Cannery Ballroom Torres opening. Uh, what's it, You said you were going to do a new one and an old one. What's the old one? Well, we're actually, I mean, in a few months here, we'll be hitting the 10-year anniversary of a record called The Con. Sure, yeah. So we've been doing kind of like a little mini con set in the middle of our headline set, which we'll be doing tonight. So, But we're going to play you The Con in honor of us being really The old. entire album. So here yeah. we go, 47 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I'm going to tune first. Yeah, okay, sounds, we're in guys. Nashville. I mean, get a grip. You can't. There we go. <laughs> See, I know how to use a guitar. <laughs> Listen that yes, I'm guilty of this, you should know this I broke down and wrote you back before you had a chance to Forget, forgotten, I am moving past this giving notice I have to go, yes, I know the feeling, know you're leaving Come down, I'm calling you to say I'm capsized, stepping on the edge of safe Come down, I'm calling back to say I'm home, now I'm coming around, I am coming around Nobody likes to buy, I really like to cry Nobody likes me, maybe if I cry Now listen 
personal reasons We know of hurt, don't call me back I imagine you, yes, I was distant, not insistent I followed suit and laid out on my back Imagine that A million hours left to think of you and think of that Calm down, I'm calling you to say I'm capsized, staring on the edge of safe Calm down, I'm calling back to say I'm home now, I'm coming around, I am coming around Nobody likes to buy, I really like to cry Nobody likes me, maybe if I cry Circle me, I need to be taken down Encircle me, I need to be taken down Encircle me, I need to be taken down Encircle me, I need to be taken down Nobody, 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 nobody Encircle me, I need to be taken down Encircle me, I need to be taken down Encircle me, I need to be taken down Lightning 100, Tegan and Sarah live here in the 1 RPM studios tonight. They're going to be headlining at Cannery Ballroom out at the Mercy Lounge Complex. MercyLounge.com or TeganandSarah.com if you want to grab a ticket. Torres opening for Tegan and Sarah. Torres are at 7. Show starts at 8 o'clock. And uh, I do get to give away a pair of tickets. Uh, before we let you leave, uh, <laughs> maybe we can have some fun here. This is uh, this is what we call the lightning round. Okay. All right. And so this is where I ask ask you five different questions and you just give us the first thing that pops in the head okay nice and easy okay so you're back from tour you open up your fridge what's the first thing that you see oh i know for sure what's in there i know that the night before we left i ordered some soup and i just left it in this tupperware so like the leftovers so i'm gonna see that when i get home which is sad that's, that was Tegan's boring answer. Mine is usually I get home from tour and there's uh, molded bread and alcohol. Awesome. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, this doesn't have to necessarily be your favorite album, but for whatever particular reason, what album do you think you've listened to the most? What album? I was just home and organizing. I had a minute and I was organizing my vinyl collection, which was a gift from my stepdad. It's his original 70s and 80s vinyl collection. And I have a lot of Bruce Springsteen, and we grew up listening to Bruce Springsteen. So I'm going to say, like, we probably listened to Tunnel of Love thousands of times. I mean, every summer, over and over and over again. We would drive 10 hours to Vancouver. It just, I knew every note. It was awesome. Nice. And I don't think I'll ever listen to anything as much as I listen to Smashing Pumpkins, Siamese Dream. Mm hmm. Awesome. My uh, when I was in high school, my band one of the songs we did was "Today." So. Oh yeah, <laughs> good song. Changed my life. That song. Uh, well, well th what year did you graduate high school? Uh, Nineteen ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was ninety-five, so I, I was yeah. kind of close. So yeah. in, in that zone. Uh, okay. So if you could be in a band, doesn't matter if the band still exists or not. What band would you like to be a member of? Oh my God, that's a good one. <laughs> right now, I feel like the people who I see online who look like they're just having the best time and, and well-deserved because they're the nicest people, 21 Pilots. Oh, so yeah. I would join that's up in a second. In fact, they have room. I mean, there's only two of them out there. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> Take us. My, my oldest daughter has, has turned me into a fan. I, I, they're, they're fantastic. Great. I think I know all their songs. They're great. They're great so guys, great. too. Just like the nicest people. It's always really? nice when you meet people and they're fantastic yeah. people because then you're, I feel like you root for them extra hard. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's a really tough one. I, I mean, I'm always obsessed with Robin, and I... It could be Robin's little sidekick. Yeah, maybe she does a record where she just like, she's like, Robin featuring Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And let's hang out. Awesome. Okay, uh, here's another one. If you could exist inside of a movie or TV show, what movie 
or TV show? All right, well, last night I watched the new season of Black Mirror, which is on Netflix. If no one here has checked it out, you should. Um, I think it originally was like a BBC thing or something, but now it's a Netflix original. And What's it called? Tell me about it. It's, it's called Black Mirror, and it's, you know, sort of like a, a look into the very near future, and it's usually related to technology, so there are these pretty, al- almost every episode feels incredibly depressing <laughs> and awful about what the future is um, related to technology, but it's it's this season was, it's, I mean, I've got a couple episodes episodes left but fantastic episode four in particular i'm not going to ruin it for anyone but the answer to the question is i would live inside that episode and that world and that vision of what the world could be black mirror yeah <laughs> all right adding that to the list of things to binge watch oh, yeah, it's, it's really fantastic it's, worth it. it's so great yeah i mean i don't know i i always sort of go back to my one of the movies like similar to your question about what would you what have you listened to so much i've probably watched my like go-to sunday or like sad movie is gross point blank with john cusack like i would just live in that world that's wow. it's like my it's like my it's go-to like a, happy place like a a, a a hired contract killer yeah he is but he goes back to his, <laughs> his he, goes dark ba- side. he goes back and <laughs> takes stock of his life through the lens of high school I, uh, I appreciate yeah. it yeah okay uh one more if uh if you could go into the matrix and download a skill what skill would you want to have? Just nice and easy, just know it really well. Oh my God, Kung I, fu. Yeah, I would probably, I mean, I'd want to be able to leap off tall buildings. Like, you know, yeah. that's like a weird, as I've gotten older, a weird fear of heights or like falling. I dream about falling a lot. So I, I would like the ability to land safely. It's a, it's a tough one for me. I can't, I just don't understand. Am I supposed to be picking a superhero thing? Like I can like. No, you could learn Japanese. Oh yeah. Oh, well then I would just learn French. French. That's well. my matrix skill. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for having fun with us in the, in the station. Thanks, thanks for having, having us. us. Tegan and Sarah, tonight they headline Cannery Ballroom. Torres is opening. She shreds. She's uh, best. That'll be happening at 8 o'clock. It did say it was an all ages show. Mm-hmm. Tegan and Sarah.com, MercyLounge.com, or be the third caller through right now if you want to get in to the show tonight at 615 777 5100. I didn't know tonight. Jim James, the voice of My Morning Jacket, returns to the concert stage. November 23rd, Ryman Auditorium. One incredible night.